coming up. We'll hit the ground running on the fastest track in the world. Then we'll shoot some hoops with the high-flying men's basketball team and check in with two tennis stars who are also doing their part off the court. Plus, we'll recap the Beanpot battle for Boston with both the men's and women's hockey teams. Yeah, time to let the dogs out for another edition of BU Terriers Unleashed. <laughs> The long and storied history of the BU track and field program added a new chapter this past off season when former assistant coach Gabe Sanders was named director. It, it's good to be back and it's good to be at the helm of I think one of the most prominent athletic academic institutions in the world. Along with the privilege of returning to BU, Coach Sanders also gets to work on one of the best indoor tracks on planet Earth. This is the fastest banked 200 meter track in the world. The data shows it, the anecdotal feedback shows it. A big piece of it is the bank starts on the hill, not concurrently. So you're not going up a bank and you're not making a turn simultaneously. It's a permanent fixture. It's a wood understructure, not metal. So you're gonna get a greater return for it as well. And lastly, I mean, you look at the atmosphere, the audience, the spectators, the athletes are on top of you. You can't help but feel the vibe and feel the energy. And it's an atmosphere that you're not gonna get anywhere else in the country. That, <laughs> there we go. That guy just broke forward for the first time and everyone here is, I don't know, it's amazing here. We are underway, the men's mile, live from Boston. The 200-meter oval at BU's Track and Tennis Center brings in elite competitors from around the globe, like world-renowned middle distance runner, Craig Engels. Craig Engels is pulling away from this field. Will he pull it off? The line, the lead, and a roll! I mean, you can't beat it. It's the best indoor track in the country, if not the world. It's amazing. I don't know what it is, if it's the fans or if it's the fast track. There he is, the winner. A fantastic mile here at Boston University. We love having you come. Thanks, Thanks for coming again. Word's gotten out that this is the fastest track in the world. We attract runners from all over the country, arguably all over the world. They treat you professionally. You get on the track, there's no messing about. You know that once you get on that track and they line you up, you're going in the next 20 seconds. And I love that. Long sprints to long middle distance the women's 1,000. As people see that, they say, hey, you know, if you want to run a fast mile, if you want to run a fast 400, 5,000, be used the place to go. It's got really good pop, and you roll off those corners, just feeling like a million bucks. And then the atmosphere. It's elite, it's high caliber, so you feel ready. Another world-class runner who's had tremendous success on BU's track is Canadian record holder, Jenna Westaway. Last year, I came here two times. I ran a 1K, and that 1K was a 237.04. Raced an 800, broke two minutes for the first time. It was so emotional in the most wonderful ways. The first time a Canadian woman has ever broken two minutes indoors. And I thought, like, this place is magic. <laughs> so it was wild. <laughs> Great facilities and great competition are all part of the Terriers track and field success. But at the end of the day, it's about a lot more than winning. We want to produce some of the best people in the NCAA, not just the best athletes. And that should go hand in hand in a place like this. And that's what we're developing right here. Go dogs, go Terriers, and I'm really excited to take this place to the next level. Up next on BU Terriers Unleashed, we'll check in with two tennis players who are finding success on and off the court. Stay with us.
The men's and women's tennis teams at Boston University have players from all across the United States and the world. Both squads are filled with student athletes who showcase what's best about BU sports. I didn't really start getting serious with tennis until the beginning of high school, about age 14, 15. Throughout high school, I started to have better and better results, and I think that allowed me to gain some traction within the USGA rankings, and I started to get a feel for what schools I could play at and what I couldn't play at, and ultimately, BU provided me with an opportunity, and uh, I took it. I started playing tennis actually when I was four, and I started competing in tournaments when I was seven or eight. As it came down to making my decision, it was clear that I wanted to be in a city and that the academics were equally, if not more important to me than the tennis. I found that BU was an excellent balance of having a very competitive team, but also really rigorous academics. Once I visited and met Leslie, it was pretty much a, a done deal. I knew as soon as I came on campus that this was the place for me. Welcome back to uh, our first SAC meeting of this semester. In addition to playing tennis, both Mark Sable and Lily Burchell hold leadership positions on the Student Athlete Advisory Committee. It essentially governs the student athlete body. We're, we're representatives not only to athletic administration, but to other parts of the university, as well as the Boston community. I think it's really easy to get involved in just your team and say like, oh, I'm a tennis player here at BU, but I think we're really working on trying to build the sense of what it is to be a student athlete at BU as a whole, as opposed to just being like an individual on a team. One of the most important things the Student Athlete Advisory Committee does is set up and participate in community service activities like the Susan G. Komen Race for a Cure and the Volley Against Violence, among many others. The one that really stands out for us is the Travis Roy spike ball tournament. Travis Roy is a famous alum from BU who suffered a traumatic injury during his uh, college hockey career here. And we thought it would be cool because his foundation is so monumental in research and innovation for spinal cord injuries. So we thought it would be cool that his presence was so big in Boston that we could kind of raise money for his cause. I've um, spoken to Travis and he's amazing and it's so great to see how excited the students get to participate in the spike ball tournament and just to give back to a BU alum I think is really special as well. Giving back to the local community while playing top level collegiate sports is an integral part of the student athlete experience at BU and it's something they all truly appreciate. I'm so proud to be um, playing for such an amazing school in an amazing city and I think the department does an incredible job of holding us to high expectations and I think it's just a different culture here. It's just really special and they really take pride in caring for each and every one of their athletes. Throughout my time here I haven't for a second felt like I wasn't being cared after and you know that I didn't have every resource I needed to succeed. Here we go! Boston! Here we go! go! One, two! Overall, I think it was a fantastic experience. I mean, first of all, just being in the city of Boston, it's, it's unlike any other. I think that's probably one of the coolest aspects of my experience. Just looking at my team, we have players from Asia, South America, from Europe, from different parts of the United States, and to really have all those different backgrounds, those upbringings, I'm, I'm I think like 90% of our team is bilingual, but then to come together and to be able to compete and find some common goal of trying to win a Patriot League title and make the NCAA tournament, that, that in and of itself is very cool. Coming up, it's Bean Pot time in Boston again. And as usual, both the men's and women's hockey teams are looking to hoist that famous trophy. It's all next on BU Terriers Unleashed. Years ago, the U.S. hockey team shocked the world by winning gold at the 1980 Winter Olympics. Now, team captain and BU alum Mike Garuzioni is telling his story in a new book. I wrote the book for one reason and one reason only. I want my grandkids to know that Papa's life was more than two weeks in Lake Placid. And in the book, I talk about how I got to Boston University, what a strange coincidence that I ended up here, how I ended up here. 
Mike was a team captain and played four standout seasons with the Terriers, which led directly to the Olympic success that changed his life, but didn't change who he was. You know, if we never won, you know, I'd, I'd still might even be working here at Boston University. I might be an assistant coach on the Jack. I mean, I don't know what path I would have taken. I'd still be very happy. I'd still be living in Winthrop, and I'd still be married to the same girl. I mean, nothing would have, would have changed other than the opportunities that I've been given. Along with Mike, there were also three other Terriers on that iconic 1980 U.S. hockey team. They returned to campus as heroes after the games and remain proud alumni to this day. You know, just the excitement here on campus was great. I mean, it was a big part of our, all of our lives. I mean, all four of us played here and had great success here uh, playing in the Jack. You know, this is a special place. It's a special family here for me. February in Boston means only one thing for college hockey, the bean pot. Facing BC in the semifinals, this one is a back and forth hard fought battle and one where the Terriers need to mount an epic comeback. Four on four as Harper takes it down low to the doorstep, the follow, score! Ference buries it and that'll make it a one goal game. Ference wheeling in, takes it down to the doorstep, little backhand flip pass there, the shot, score! Tie game on the power play goal from Patrick Harper. Harper over on the far side to keep it in for BU. Pass to Mestro Simone, he scores! And Boston University has come all the way back with a buck 42 to go. With BC on the power play and under a minute left in regulation, the game is tied at four. BC ties it up with 58 seconds to go. The Terriers would not be denied a trip to the championship, settling this one in the second overtime. Here's Vlasic stepping up. He fires it on net. Spencer Knight to save the rebound. Score! Wilmer Skoog for the Boston University Terriers who are moving on to the Beanpot Final. The following night, over at Walter Brown Arena, the women's hockey team aims to defend their 2019 Beanpot title. And tonight, it's all BU. One time drive and they score! Abby Cook and the Terriers get the first one. Elia with Comfer going to the net. Elia waits for Comfer scores. Tap in score for Jesse Comfer. Make it two zip. BU. Here's Comfer again. Comfer wrist shot score. Comfer snipes it home, and the Terriers will clinch a spot in the Bean Pot Championship game a week from tonight. The garden is packed and ready for hockey. It is the 68th Beanpot Championship. Boston University ready to take on the Northeastern Huskies. I give an offer to let you be out there with you boys tonight. Come on. In the middle. From Sweden. Wilmer's go. Hey. On D on the left side. Victor New York. David Ferentz. Hey. And between the pipes. Mark McMurray. Austin Abel. Jake Wise! McCarthy sliding it across. Seekers fires, he scores! Power play goal! And just like that, it's 2-0 Terriers. BU dominates the first and grabs a 2-0 lead. But this is the championship, and these opponents will not go quietly. Down 4-2, heading into the third, the Terriers take a bite and fight their way back. Ference looking, waiting, shooting, score! Power play goal! One goal game here in the third. Here's Harper coming in deep, centering pass just wide of the net! Harper tries to put it back towards the net. Final seconds winding down, wide, sends it front, score! Segris with less than a second to go has tied the 
68th Pete Pot Championship at four. Once again, it would take a second overtime period to decide this one. A late call goes against BU, and the Terriers 31st Bean Pot Championship will have to wait until next time. The next night, the women's championship game, a raucous Walter Brown Arena, and BU comes out flying early. Giveaway, near center ice, Schuler in on Frankel. She shoots, backhand scores! Christina Schuler and BU leads Northeastern in the Beanpot final, one nothing in the first. Cook, holding, waiting. One-timer, low, Frankel, they score! Cook from the high side. And we've got a brand new hockey game in the second. BU two, Northeastern two. At the end of the second period, and the score nodded at two, this Beanpot Championship will come down to a crucial third period. We could have a lot of hockey in front of us, all right? Let's go find one, doesn't matter how it's done, just go find one. Ugly ones are just as pretty at this time of the day, all right? Let's go. Down one. With under a minute to play and the goalie pulled, the Terriers drive the net, sending this one to overtime. Six on five hockey for the Terriers. They need a goal. But TV, here's the swing. Oh, oh, oh. The deflection. BU scores! Sammy Davis on the doorstep. We're tied at three with 22.8 to go. Another great effort by BU unfortunately results in an ending that mirrors the men's championship game. The Terriers now turn their attention to getting ready for the postseason, and both the men's and women's teams will be ready. Lots more still to come here on BU Terriers Unleashed as we get inside the men's basketball team and find out the keys to their success. Don't go anywhere. Hard work on and off the court is a hallmark of this year's men's basketball team at BU. And that work ethic starts at the top with second year captain Max Mahoney. I had the uh, privilege of being a captain last year, so I think last year kind of primed me for this year. I've tried to use my experience as much as I can to help younger guys. And I think guys have been really receptive to what I've had to offer them, which I really appreciate and I think it's helped us. People don't always see like behind the scenes. He really keeps us together. Even when, you know, things might not be going our way, we learn from him. A lot of people see his highlight plays and a lot of his buckets. To be honest, nobody can really guard him in the league. He's constantly talking on the bench. You see him always clapping. And I think that's one of the most important things you can have from a leader. He's the same guy every day. Uh, he brings immense energy. Every time he steps on the court, we look at him as a, a role model on and off the court too. So he just, He's just a great guy, a great individual to have as our captain. Terriers go into Max Mahoney, and that is 1,000 points in the career of Max Mahoney. We try to come in every day, um, focus first on our practices. Uh, we kind of take it day by day. Uh, one thing we've really focused on is not as much who we're playing, but about how we're playing. We're really focused in on a set of values we try to live up to and uh, concepts we try to play with them. It doesn't matter how you contribute to the team. It's not all about scoring points. It's not about getting the most rebounds. It's just about contributing your type of way. Everybody can clap their hands. Everybody can make contact. Everybody can talk to each other. And I think that's a big thing that's helped us be successful. McCoy, pull up. Got it! Having a talented, committed, and selfless team has led to a strong season for the Terriers and also developed an unbreakable bond amongst the players that means even bigger things ahead. I love our group. I love the camaraderie, the chemistry that we have. And so there's a nice energy around the team, a nice feeling. They've been a pleasure to coach. 
from the standpoint of they want to win and they understand it's about team and it's not about themselves. So that's that's been really, really good. To be honest, this is the most like connected group of guys we've had since I've been here. We're always like eating together, we're always going places together, we're always like laughing, joking around and and I think it, it really shows on the court. I think it translates. As the season's going on, we're just getting tighter and tighter. And that team chemistry that we have helps everything gel so quickly. So we learn things faster and we have fun. Like, this is the, the best team that we've had in a long time. And just being as a brotherhood, that's it's definitely the closest team I've been on since I've been here. You'll drive all the way to the cup and one. All the good feelings, as well as the Terriers winning ways, has led to some very high expectations as tournament time approaches. This is one of the more competitive non-conference schedules that we had. We hope that the competitive schedule will help us. We feel good about our ability to compete. Now we got to go win. Tynan gets the lead. Sky's the limit, honestly. I believe it. So. We can come in and be anybody. I feel like we put us on the court, anybody. We can make it happen. I think Coach is doing a great job preparing us for those next games and the, our next battles. And we have that mindset. Championship, championship. We talk about it every day. And no limits to our mindset. So I think we can go as far as we want to take ourselves. And I truly believe that. I think we can make it to the tournament. I think we can go far in the tournament. McCoy buries the three in front of his own bench. I think we're a tough out. I really love our team. We've got to see the positive in what we're doing, and we got to try to build on that and get better, and that's my job, to be honest with you. I have to steer the ship in that direction and make sure that's where we're going. That wraps up another episode. But be sure to stay with us all year long as we cover the best of Boston University athletics. Thanks for watching, and be sure to join us again next time on BU Terriers Unleashed.